All right, so we're inside, and one of the things I wanted to talk to Donnelly about, she, you're in a brand new area, so mm -hmm. basically you're starting your coffee roasting business over from scratch. Right. But you have, how many years have you guys been doing this now? Uh, we've been doing it uh, approximately 10 years. About 10 years. Yeah. So they've learned a few things about starting a coffee roasting business mm -hmm. from scratch, and I really wanted to have her share your marketing plan and how you're going to get going in a brand new area where you knew zero people when you moved here. Our son, that was your it. Son. Yeah, you knew <laughs> yeah. Your son, yeah. yeah. So, so what's the plan for getting a new business started? Okay, so basically what we did is we had to go jump through all the hoops to get legalized. Once we got the coffee roaster actually up and installed and put in the shed, um, then at that point we had to get all the proper licensing um, from the state and our county and in city. Uh, once that was achieved, then we had to start coming up with some marketing ideas. How are we going to get the word out? So uh, initially how we started out was uh, we updated our website, of course, because we had to make some changes there. And then we came up with things like these door hangers, which I'm going to canvas and farm um, our neighborhood, as well as a few other neighborhoods that I know of. And uh, from there, what we have started doing is, is we made up these little two ounce pouches and we don't leave the house without having at least a handful of those with us. And it, whether it's going to the gas station, it's going to the auto place, get a tire changed, all these businesses that we're giving business to, we're taking coffee in and saying, hey, give it a try, see how you like it and let us know and hoping that we will get business from that. Um, also, a really good idea, especially down here in the south where we are, is they have these public markets all over the place. Um, I know some areas don't have that, but that's an avenue that we are also um, going to be doing as well. And just setting up a booth there and getting the word out. That, that's the biggest thing. When you know nobody, you have to get the word out. Um, right. So, so, and you check out the rules in your HOA. Yes. And although you couldn't hang things on doorknobs here, you can put things in mailboxes, right? Correct. So you've got your door hangers here, yep. I see. Yep, and they're going to go in everyone's mailboxes. And they're going to go in everyone's mailbox, and you're actually having a local fair for the HOA mm -hmm. uh, coming up. Yes. And so 150 yes. of your neighbors will be there. Yes. And th that would be a way to get started. One of the things that the Marlins did really well is they created a website that was really easy to navigate and order. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think, I'm going to sell my coffee online. I hear this all the time. And you can sell your coffee through a website as a tool, mm -hmm. but you're, you're responsible for driving new people to the website. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that that website has a really good buying experience. This morning I was on my phone looking through the uh, mobile version mm -hmm. of your website. Super easy to order, easier to pick your degree of roast and grind and all that stuff. Sure. So I would think uh, people should go to bluebarlandcoffee.com check out their website, check out the mobile version of it, and, mm -hmm. and see what a really good format for a website mm -hmm. and a mobile-friendly website mm -hmm. look like. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So this is a part-time business. Uh, mm -hmm. Dave is mostly retired now. Right. Um, and then you're working, you're still doing your real estate uh -huh. business down here or whatever. Right. So um, what has coffee roasting? You've done this now for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So. I think I tell people, what has coffee roasting done for you guys and mm -hmm. how does it work for you financially and mm -hmm. just about that experience? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the first thing is, is you want to be somewhat passionate about coffee and most people are and we definitely are. It's a, a common thing that you can nearly talk to anybody but maybe a child about. Um, they're not drinking coffee quite yet maybe, but um, it, it's an easy... Uh, opening of a door to get a conversation going because everybody I've ever talked to, you know, loves to talk about it. So um, for, for us, that's been wonderful and being able to take care of uh, family and friends with coffee and, and just having a niche that is a little bit different. We're not a coffee shop that you go to to socialize, although we could supply the coffee for it. We're a boutique roaster. So it's unique nowadays. People um, are so used to getting um, on their phones and ordering what they want, having it delivered now with COVID happening, groceries, whatever, their meals. Um, this is really wonderful because 
They can get online, they can order their coffee, and they can get it just the way they want it, roasted. Uh, people go to a grocery store and they gotta take what they get off the shelf, and it's usually several months old. With us, we don't roast your order until you order it. And we, get, we roast it exactly how you want, the grind you want, um, the lightness, the darkness that you want. We can guide people um, if they contact us, um, if they have a favorite kind of coffee as to which one to order. So that part is just having the love of doing that. And the financial end of it, what's really been nice about it is it's something that we purposefully set up to do as our retirement income. For us, yeah. Very th that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, one of the other things too is you're the perfect example of our average customer that has little to no roasting experience mm -hmm. when they come to us. Oh, absolutely. How difficult is it to roast? Oh my word, it's one of the easiest things I have ever done. Um, it truly is. I mean, you don't even have to have great cooking skills. Um, the way that you've set up these roasters, it's so simple um, to roast it. You throw the beans in. You know, you get them cooking and then you just start waiting for the temperature to come to the proper degrees that you want it to for the roast that you want. You pull it off, you put it in the cooling rack and you're done. Yeah. It's and that you, simple. You, you understand because you're, you're good at marketing. Mm -hmm. You guys um, have had, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of success getting the word out there. Mm -hmm marketing right here for your farmer's markets. They got oh, their, uh, exactly. We just had these done for yeah, our so, first fall market. So when you go to fairs and stuff, you'll yeah. have, have this to take with yeah. you. Um, and we, we tell people every time, every time we talk to them, you know, do not worry. 75% of our customers have little to no roasting experience when they mm -hmm. come to this. Typical, mm -hmm. to, just like you, mm -hmm. um, the roasting part's easy, you get them up and running. But if we can get them headed in the right direction on marketing and give mm -hmm. them some ideas there, that's what makes them successful. When I see a roaster focusing on their little business plan that they have mm -hmm. and how they're gonna get started in marketing, um, I can tell when they're going to be successful because they're focusing on the right things up front. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, well this was fun. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll Absolutely. Here. We're going to head down to Hilton's Head. Yeah, and, uh, South Carolina. Go mm -hmm. on the beach and, and take a little break. But um, hopefully somebody will get uh, some uh, good information out yes. of somebody who's just starting over again, who has right. experience. And so we're going to take off and go on a little vacation trip, but thanks for watching.